Yo, what's up, y'all? Ruben Davis, future doc here. And it's been a while. <laughs> I know it's been a while, and that's why I'm doing this video. Hopefully it's brief. I really just wanted to give y'all some updates on what's been going on in these past few weeks that since I've started medical school. You know, I had white coat ceremony. I had um, my first exam. You know, I'm joining organizations, et cetera, et cetera. And I just wanted to update you guys on how everything's going, how things have changed, you know, like my studying, how's my studying changed, how some of the other things, my perspective has changed. So I just wanted to update y'all real quick. So let's just get right into it. Firstly, I want to say <laughs> I've been trying to vlog and I've been trying to get some other content out there for y'all, but I, I, vlogging is so hard. I don't know. I suck at it. Like just recording everything that's going on in your day and all of this other stuff is just tragic. So I've been thinking of some ways maybe that I can make it a little easier on myself. For example, like putting more stories on my Instagram. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to like flood my Instagram like that. I'd rather like I was thinking about maybe reviving my Snapchat so that you guys could get more like daily updates from me. So if you would like the Snapchat, I think I'm, I'm gonna just put my username in the comments below, in the description box below. Follow me for that, message me, whatever, like, you know, put it, leave in the comments like, yeah, definitely do the, you know, daily stuff on a Snapchat and I'll do that. All right, now that's out of the way, let's talk about this first exam. All right, I pass. <laughs> so for, let's just clap it up for that because I passed my first exam in medical school. And that's like huge, like the weight I felt kind of just lift off of me after I took that exam, because we get our score immediately after we submit it. And so I knew at that moment, like, wow, I pass. And it wasn't like, it was like a middle pass too. It wasn't like super low. It wasn't like high, like, you know, of course how everybody would want, but like, it was a good pass, I passed. Biochemistry, so much to know, so much that they teach you and include in this topic. So I'm, you know, like super proud of myself for accomplishing that and, you know, like doing the thing because that's something I worried about. Like, you know, in premature, they like, yeah, these exams aren't like the real exams. The real exams are super hard, blah, blah, blah. And if I'm gonna be honest, one thing that has sort of changed that I'm like, very like surprised about is my anxiety level like I am not as like stressed as I thought I would be now it's very early on and these are some of the easier subjects especially because a lot of it is review which is a little bit more clinical depth than I've gone on you know in undergrad and like my master's but my anxiety level is like relatively low and that's surprising because it's like, med school isn't impossible. Like that's what it's sort of feeling like now. It's like, it's not impossible. Whereas before it felt like, oh my gosh, you know, people sort of crank it up to be this like super crazy, like, and don't get me wrong. You're busy all the time. Like I just, I, I'm still at school right now. I'm still here. I'm in one of the classrooms recording this. I just finished, it's like six o'clock right now or five o'clock, I bet. And I just finished diagnostic reasoning, um, you know, where we see a patient and then we do a write-up afterwards, you know, trying to diagnose, um, do a differential, do a literature review. I just finished with my group. And so now I'm in here recording this video for y'all. And a lot of days are like that, where we have PCM and that lasts for a little bit. We have, um, you know, different, uh, we have different like longitudinal courses in the afternoon on top of four hour lectures in the morning. And I have somebody that's going to lectures. So I'll get into that a little bit later, but it's not feeling as impossible, you know? There's a lot to do, there's a lot to study, a lot to manage, but you know, there is time to study, there is time to do, to like have a life, there is time to have balance. So that's a very positive note. And, I'm, and then this is gonna be a short video. I'm gonna like probably do more videos where I'm diving more into depth about like, you know, some of these, you know, things I'm sort of realizing in a lot of these realities. So 
you know, stay tuned for that. If you got more questions or you want to hear more about these, just like keep that in mind that, you know, I'm trying to keep this video kind of brief. So studying, um, if you haven't seen it, I put out a video, um, some weeks ago about how I plan on being successful, you know, and primarily focusing on like, you know, my studying, like what, how am I going to study? Let's just say completely changed. <laughs> um, the, like, of course I'm still trying to like stay ahead and, um, do different things, but it's changed because I realized that that just wasn't efficient for me. It wasn't effective for me. The information wasn't sticking. It wasn't staying. And the, the type of information I needed just wasn't, didn't lend itself to what I was, you know, trying to do and the way I was going about doing it. And so I've completely sort of changed my note taking aspect. And I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to take notes. But then once I realized like a lot of the professors kind of talk off the slides, but they also, some of them, some of them, like at least now in genetics, uh, they talk a lot off the slides. So I don't really need to take too many notes because the note, the slides speak for themselves. So I'm mostly trying to find ways to test myself. So now what I do is my note taking are questions. So I'll hear them say something and I'll synthesize that into a question based off of how I feel like they'll put this information on the exam. Some of them are a little bit more straightforward of like, what is this syndrome? You know, like what is Turner syndrome? What is Williams syndrome? Like what are what are these things? Like what is, what is the genetic inheritance pattern? Like, you know, very straightforward things that I do need to know. And some of them might be a little bit more clinical based, like when they get into a clinical scenario uh, about something like right now, I'm thinking about like the Prader Willi syndrome and you know, like the inheritance of that, like this versus that, I might frame it more so in a clinical question because that's how they give them to us on the exam. So I'll frame it like that so that, you know, I'm learning this information the same way I'm gonna have to get tested on it. So, you know, and, and that's also how I study. So that's like my first pass too. Like, so when I go finish after class, I go see if I can answer all those questions without looking at my notes. And then the ones I missed, you know, I go back and review everything, make sure I didn't miss anything and, you know, review the ones that I couldn't answer. And so that's sort of like my first pass through it. And then also, I didn't think I would like it, but I'm actually getting into Anki um, and specifically Anking, because what I'm realizing is like it has all the information that they're teaching us, like. You know, I, they teach us about all these disorders and these different um, diseases and treatments and diagnoses. And Anki pretty much has all of that stuff. Now, learning Anki was a bit of a little curve, like trying not to get frustrated about suspending all the cards and doing all these add-ons. And it was a little convoluted, but once you figure it out, it was pretty easy. So Anki has also been my friend, um, just like trying to memorize a lot of these things. Cause there are some things you do need to memorize in medical school, a lot of things actually, a lot of disorders and names and treatments and symptoms, a lot of things that you need to memorize. So Anki is a really great tool, I think for everybody. I mean, it's not for everybody, not everybody doesn't use it, but definitely something to probably look into. Um, and that's another thing, there's no shortage of resources here. Like everybody uses some sort of resource that you've never heard of before. And it's easy to get inundated with like, oh, maybe I should try this, maybe I should try that. Like, you know, take your time. Don't feel like you need to do everything and do what everybody else is doing. Try to figure out what works best for you. All right. So that's that on my first exam. Super proud of myself. Super happy. You know, stress level is pretty low. Um, some other things going on with me. I'm actually running for class president. <laughs> and that's actually a huge surprise for me because I didn't think that I would actually run for class president. Cause I'm like, I don't have time. That's like a lot of responsibility. I'm like, do I even really want to like have that responsibility? But somebody in my class was like, Ruben, like you should run for class president. Like I feel like you'd be great. And I just started thinking about it. And in terms of my personality and the things that I am passionate about in terms of like advocating for people and, you know, being social and, you know, communicating all those type of things. I was like, you know what? I think I would make a, a great president. I think I would be good at the job. And it's something that I think that I would enjoy. And the primary responsibilities for the president is to, you know, communicate with the deans and administrators about like, you know, any grievances that we have as a class. 
Um, you know, also sit on committees, you know, various things, oversee like all the other exec board stuff, plan social events, um, you know, manage uh, the USMLE, you know, step one resources and different things like that. So I was like, these are all things that I think I would really enjoy doing for my class and, you know, being that advocate, being that voice for my class. I was like, yeah, let me do it. I don't know if I won yet. So the voting process is a week long. Um, we gave speeches actually on Monday of, yeah, this month, this past Monday, we did speeches. Um, I'm running against two other great individuals and we'll find out on Tuesday, this Tuesday coming, who actually won. So I'm excited about that. Something I never thought I would do and I'm doing it. Another thing as far as organizations that I'm joining, uh, I joined the American Medical Association and the Medical Society of Virginia here. They're like a joint chapter organization situation. I um, mean, that's essentially uh, political advocacy, uh, like so lobbying and, you know, like and writing up legislation to, you know, try to get passed in the General Assembly here in Virginia, but also on a federal level. Um, hey, babe. You good though, babe? All right. Okay, that was the fiance. Um, but like I was saying, oh yeah, so they're a lobbying organization that, um, you know, I'll be able to write up legislation, you know, meet with senators and speak before Congress, both Virginia and uh, federal. So, and that's something I'm like extremely passionate about. Like I love like, you know, the political advocacy, especially in terms of like healthcare. Um, that's something that I really want to get into ever since like I lobbied for infertility um, legislation um, in one of my uh, summer internships. It was like life changing. Like I didn't even realize like a lot of us don't even realize that we can, you know, at least I don't know about now after January 6th, but before you could just like kind of go into the Capitol and see your legislator. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody really realized that you feel like there's that separation. And I grew up in D.C like inside of DC. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's gonna be super fun. I'm really excited about that. And I'm also, I've also applied for a position within that organization. So I'm doing a lot, <laughs> I'm doing a lot. You know, med school, you know, I was just talking to my fiance about this. Like, I'm like really happy to be in med school. Like I'm having fun, even though it's a lot of work. I'm having fun because I know that this is the work that's actually going to get me out there treating people, you know, in the hospital, stuff like that. So I'm just overall excited. Um, still don't know exactly what, you know, like specialty or anything I want to do. We had the SIG fair, so the special interest group, so like, you know, surgical specialties mostly. Um, but you know, there was also family medicine, ob and all those. I, I pretty much signed up for all of them for like their email list. So I'm gonna go to some lunch lectures and different um, like panels they have with residents and attendings to just sort of like learn more. Actually tomorrow too, I have a preceptorship with uh, an internal medicine resident. So that's like a new requirement that they added this year for us. So I'm gonna be doing that tomorrow, which is gonna be very exciting. Um, I haven't shadowed in a while. So it's gonna feel really good to like, you know, get into that hospital setting and really, you know, I'm gonna be mostly just observing, but you know, if there is a chance to maybe interact with patients or just like see it and see it happening like real time, um, I'm very excited about that. Especially as a medical student, it's like a different vibe I feel like where you have that position of like, okay, you're somebody that's here to learn, but not like in undergrad, I feel like it was different. It's like, you're so lowly, you know what I'm saying? You're not even, you don't have the potential. Well, you have the potential to be a doctor, but it's like, you're not there yet. You ain't crossed that threshold to be like, oh yeah, you're gonna be a doctor. Whereas now it's like, oh yeah, you're, you're gonna be a doctor. If that makes sense. Not to say like, if you're pre-med, you're not gonna be a doctor, but I hope y'all pick up on what I'm trying to say. I went to a concert, <laughs> me and Destiny went to a, Alex Asley concert. Let's go. I might start a few clips here.
right after the day after my exam, we went straight to DC um, and did that on a Thursday. So that was really dope. Uh, I started to say like, you know, there is time for you to like be a human, you know, in, in medical school. So don't let, you know, all the pressure of school really get to you because like you're here, you can do the work. You study every day, you're gonna be just fine. Like, y'all good. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Like, I'm here doing it. I'm here being successful, like passing my first exam. I feel really good about this exam we have next week in, with, about genetics. Um, I just, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can say. And I'm really rooting for everybody that's trying to get to where I am. I'm rooting for everybody that's where I am. If you're struggling, like, you know, feel free to reach out if you just need somebody to talk to. You know, I ain't been in the game that long, but like, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd love to be there for, you know, anybody who may need it. And uh, yeah, thank y'all for watching this video. I'm gonna do some more videos. I plan on doing another video t where other people can come and talk about how their experience has changed since beginning med school, um, like their perspective, their study habits and stuff, just to give y'all more um, information than just for me because everybody has different experiences and they do different things that might be able to help you. So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully it don't take too long to get out there. I'm gonna try to find a way to make, you know, these more often because I love interacting with you guys and I'm hoping that, you know, y'all find some benefit from these. Um, don't forget, let me know about that Snapchat situation. If y'all wanna do something like that, like I just wanna get y'all more real time information, like on a daily basis, more interaction. So, let me know if y'all down with that or if y'all have any other ideas on how we can, you know, connect and y'all can like sort of see my day to day, what goes on. I'm, I tried doing a day in the life vlog <laughs> and I mean, I don't know. I didn't really put the clips together. It just didn't feel right. I feel like I didn't do it good enough. I feel like I missed a lot of shots, so I might try another one. So just be on the lookout. A lot of stuff to come. I'm gonna definitely keep y'all updated on whether I get this president or not. Yeah, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. You know, I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers. So tell your friends, tell your uncle, tell your mommy, tell your peppy. All right. Keep studying, keep dreaming, keep living. Future Doc out.